is that when I'm uh, doing this uh, work, excuse me, bud. Get this out of the way. <clears throat> I do have a big work table about this long, but it's uh, 36 inches wide. You know, because I, I I built it when I was doing that railing because I needed a bigger work surface, so it's big enough to put a rail on. <laughs> uh, so it's. You know, railings are 30 inches, and so it's 36. So, the first thing I do is obviously, <coughs> I don't know if you see that, is I do my designs. Okay, so this design is that panel on the right. See that? There it is. And then I've also got uh, another design for the uh, panel that's on the left. All right. So those are done, and so what I was going to do is go through. I've got two other designs and we'll go through some uh, uh, steps on that as well. So I have a, a work area. Now <clears throat> one of the things I need on, on the uh, domino since I'm so I have the, the domino and I've got the wings <clears throat> already set up on it and uh, so these have uh, you know, scales on it on the side there. I don't know if you can see those there. Uh, but on the uh, sides here, we have uh, scales. Now it is metric, okay? So you know, I can do a bit, but I can approximate. And I was I was doing the uh, one inch work, and so I need half of that one inch. So it's uh, 25.2. So half is 12.6. And so I can, you know, guesstimate 12.6, and if it didn't hit the mark when I go to put it together, go back, you know, move it over a half a millimeter and run it in again, and uh, which is a lot quicker than taking a chisel out and trying to cut another sixteenth uh, of an inch off of your mortise. Uh, so, what what the wings are for is when <coughs> I'm doing the uh, side cuts, you know where the uh, thing goes in. So it would be set up like this and then I can pin, use a pin to mark it and then hold it against probably this side. Uh, so I can hold it against the end there and then I will get uh, it cut right exactly where I, I want it to uh, be. Okay. Now These pieces here I've got set up is for the wings here, so I can hit the same point either from the left or from the from the right, uh, depending on what I'm doing. <clears throat> now the other attachment is this one, and I can actually use this one while these are still on, but not the other way around. This is the one that I use to cut the ends. So I can sit on it. It's set for the uh, one inch, uh, but it fits right over the end and then it'll cut it uh, right in the center. So I've got settings for the depth uh, you know, of cut from the top of the uh, work surface and also how deep I'm going into the piece of wood. Uh, so it has settings for that. So <coughs> given the tool then there are issues on design. So the tool affects uh, the design of, of some things. And uh, I'm losing some. Uh, the, uh, the, the this, these two designs, like I said, I've, I've already finished. Now, one of the things that I, I do is on, on layout is, and it, it's different sizes, and there was, 
So say that we're doing a, a piece and uh, we want to do something like this. Now, what you get, we can do this design like a puzzle. Okay, so we've got that design. Now, my wife said, well, I like it. Now, this is square, right? But I can do the other design simply by, you know, how I cut. Okay, so a lot of times when I'm trying to figure out the fit rather than do all the math associated with it, I just do this kind of layout, sized appropriately to what I'm doing, I think, and then I'll just, you know, draw a line and cut it, you know, to, to fit what I'm going into. So there's different ways of, of working around different <coughs> restrictive issues. Now, these are the same basic parts, but if I Uh, anyway, you can flip them around and get, where was it? Uh, so anyway, the, the thing is, is that you can change the design, okay? So these are actually uh, the same. And then these are the mirror of them. So I could have these like this where I have the, you know, the mirror of it. And so you can change entirely how it uh, all goes around. Uh, the work and then of course like I said if they you know want you know you could do it any any number of ways so it's all up to you on the design on the layout on how you want to do it because all of these are the same size now I can then you know do more and just put it together however I want and change the design so there's some uh, basic uh, components and again like I say you've got to you know, how you put them together ha has bearing on your uh, <clears throat> on your work. And when you, uh, it, with the domino, in other words, it, it keys off of this top side of the uh, tool. So you need to actually uh, make sure that you cut it on the same side. So I usually mark them up, you know, as to, you know, number them and mark them and everything. Now, when I'm actually doing a, a, a piece for a customer, I'm actually using painter's tape, and then I, I'm writing on that, so I don't have a bunch of lead to try to get out of the work, <laughs> especially if I'm going to you know, stain it and finish it and all that. But you do need to number it uh, as to how it's going to do. <clears throat> so like I say, the, the designs that you can do are just whatever you can come up with, in other words, if you can envision it, it's all just straight lines and it's all measured off and everything uh, else like that. What you use? What is the uh, I use the uh, triple type bond three and uh, usually what I do when I, I'm, I'm doing it outside, you know, not that I would ever over engineer, but uh, I'll uh, glue it and pin it, you know, with, uh, you know, I did that bench that I brought in here a few weeks back, you know, it's all got hidden, but it's uh, glued and pinned uh, with uh, the slip tenons. <clears throat> now the uh, railing, since it was uh, vinyl, uh, the glue I used was, you know, PVC. <laughs> now, I've had to, I pre-fit that probably about five times before I put any, you know, adhesive on it. Because with PVC, as you know, once it's on, it's on. There's no, with wood and, you know, glue, you know, well then you got a little work time. So you can play with it and, you know, hammer it and adjust it and take your square out and see, you know. It has to be right the first time in the, uh, on the last two, the bottom and the top, when they were good, that's seven joints that were all at the same time in less than five seconds. So, you, you, so I had little stops and everything to hold everything in place. So
so that when I put it on, nothing moved, and you just go on and then, you know, uh, had a had a board, you know, so I got ready, slide, bang, 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 you know. Yeah, the solid uh, inch and a half uh, square, you know, which is just like a lot of the railings that use the, the inch and a half wood uh, and the PVC. And this looks real nice. The edges are already finished. I mean, it looks real nice. And she can pressure wash it to her heart's content and not have to worry about it. And never have to paint it. And the grandkids can climb on it, you know, because, uh, I mean, that... You know, you got a one and a half inch square surface of PVC, you know, uh, adhesive. It, it's not moving. <laughs> I mean, they'd have to actually break the PVC uh, to do it, you know. So it, it's uh, it was an interesting project, to say the uh, least. I would, if I did it again, I'd probably charge even more money. Festool. It's the uh, Festool Domino. And uh, yeah, this, this is the uh, 500. They make a bigger one that does even bigger. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you can do structural stuff, uh, post and beam probably with that. Now, once I have an idea on my design, Then I go to my saws, and like on this this work here, uh, there's not any good one inch stock, so you get one and a half and rip it, which is uh, what all this was was actually the uh, regular one and a half inch uh, stock from. Uh, big box store and uh, so we cut all these uh, pieces and then by the time I've gotten to this look this point I've uh, I've done my design now th this one that we're doing here is this design I spent a lot of time doing uh, doing layouts and all that, so you'll see the, the basic design there. So uh, I've got this. This didn't get ripped, obviously, but you know, you get the idea. Ran out of wood, <laughs> wood that had been cut. So on this one, so we've got these already here, and then there's. These two here, these two here, and here, and here. And then now in my shop I have little, I'll cut spacers uh, f for that. So I just, uh, usually I do exactly like this and just do a little layout and make sure that I've got <coughs> everything just about right now these are a little long but you know it's just the beginning because I wasn't sure how the long these are going to be and I was working last night trying to finish it up to get ready for today uh, so I would obviously I've got in my shop right now I've got my compound miter saw sitting here I've got the table saw sitting over here and the router here. And my work table is on the other end. So so I can, you know, jump back and forth between them. My shop's not that big. It's uh, 12 by 24. At the, when I built it, 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 uh, it seemed like it was pretty big. And then I started moving my equipment in. And uh, I was uh, doing real well. <coughs> Uh, and then I, you know, started moving all in, and all of a sudden it started getting crowded. Uh, and I, I'm in the process of reworking everything because uh, I had 
had my eye on the uh, Laguna uh, Death Collector, the one and a half horsepower one, which is plenty for a 12 by 24 shop, I assure you. Uh, <coughs> Uh, nearly a thousand cubic feet per minute, you know, so it's like turning my entire shop in three minutes. <laughs> uh, so uh, they had one after the, the, down the road, they had one that was uh, a show from the uh, show, the IFW, and had this, had the show discount, and, and uh, I was looking at it and everything, and uh, most of y'all know Robert, he came up and said, well, you know, since you're a regular customer, if you if you want that, he said, I know you want it. I said, yeah, I do. He says, well, I'll give you another 10% off. And see, things kind of work out. You know, I guess the good Lord looking out after me because I had just finished up a job uh, putting a little porch and railing and putting a door on the back of a house that had been changed to commercial and they had to have a back door. Well, you can't have just the back door for commercial. You got to have the door the deck, you know, an approved deck, railing, and all that kind, of, which I don't mind. And it had just enough money to pay <laughs> pay for that, so it kind of worked out. So I said okay, and then I had to pick that. Well, now I got this big black beast sitting in the corner, trying to figure. Well, now I got to redes redesign and actually do a dust collection design, uh, but that's okay. It it pulls the air. Uh, when I, I hooked it up to my miter saw, just one of the four inch uh, ports, and I, I have to make sure that I, I've got a, a zero tolerance on the fence. It will suck a piece of wood up, off, I mean, right off of the saw. <laughs> I said, oh my, well, okay. So we'll have to take a look at that. So, uh, so I cut all the pieces and get it all laid out. And so you see that this is starting to look like this. And then, of course, I've got the miter saw right there. So I would cut the corners here. I'd probably cut these down a bit more. Now, one of the things on the design that I noticed on this one was that, you know, when you get these squares the same, let me pull this up a bit, that, you know, this cut and this cut don't match. Okay. So what I'm going to do on the actual piece is actually cut this across here so that then it will optically it will look right uh, and, uh, and, and and I'll compensate for the fact that a miter cut is longer than the straight cut and so that that'll be how it'll be lined up there now, once I have the uh, layout, and of course uh, I've measured everything, <clears throat> then I would uh, go ahead and do these uh, diagonal cuts here, make sure that I get, and then get the other pieces around the outside. Then once I've got all that laid out, now on the outside on the links, I don't cut them too length. I just cut them a little bit long because I don't know exactly how it's going to come out necessarily once it's pulled together uh, with the domino. So that's the, the next step, you know, once I've cut everything and then I lay it out. Now, once I've got it all laid out, then I start cutting the uh, ends. Now for the ends, like I said, I've got this piece here. Let me get this hooked over here. I have to make sure that it's attached. I just had it slid on there. So it just slides on and then you just tighten down the uh, two sides there. And it also, these two green knobs are the adjustments for the width here to, to uh, make it. So I just, and it has a uh, indicator on this side that shows you where you, where, where you are as far as, so I can do both sides or I can offset a little bit or whatever that I want to do. So once I have it set up, then it actually just fits over the top like that.
And then I can do And so there's your mortise. <laughs> that a little quicker than going and setting it up and all of that sort of stuff. Can you show the motion on uh, on there without having the wooden place to see the way it's not going in like a uh, biscuit. Not like a biscuit but in the head they blade. I don't know, can you can you see the uh, end there? Okay. Yeah, so it's it's rotating. Okay, so, like so it's a little router that oscillates. And uh, this is the four millimeter uh, for the uh, the smaller ones. I'll pass these samples out. So this. This is all the different sizes that I have uh, for now. I've got some this thick uh, and you can get different lengths and you can actually get sticks and then cut them to whatever length you want, you know, your own uh, length. So we can pass these around here. <coughs> so I would go and cut all of those, and then, of course, uh, on the uh, side cuts, get all the out of the way here. Hmm? Okay, I, I'll show you that here in just a second. Uh, so, on the side cuts, obviously I need this uh, one for doing the ends. This this piece would come off. And so now we're ready to do these. Now, when I when I do like since it, this is only an an, an inch. One of the issues that you have on, on that is that, you know, it'll rock. So what I have to do is actually put another piece behind it, which gives me enough service area so that when I hold it down, it's actually flat and I don't get any flexibility. And so then I uh, want to Set this one here. What it is, I just ran a stop up to the, the left side of the uh, wood so that I've got it already set up. And of course, you can freehand them. In other words, mark them all up. I've done uh, that also uh, to actually uh, do it. but. And go ahead and pass this one around, and here's uh, with the other one there. Well, but the uh, <coughs> place. Anyway, so you can see how tight that, that, that actually fits. So you can make it extremely tight. This does have adjustments, however. Not that I ever misdo the design or anything like that, but I can make it, this is for a tight fit. Okay, what, what is going around there uh, is it, a very tight fit uh, between the uh, two uh, pieces. But now I can actually make the mortise wider which gives me a little wiggle room, as they say. Okay. Now, I use that, for example, when I am doing, it came in extremely useful, but these, these type, because you know, I'm not always sure exactly on the end product where that's going to be necessarily, but if, if 
not so much in inside here, but where it's going to be on the outside. But uh, let's swing over to this one here, Buzz. See the, these pieces here? I didn't use tenons on everything, okay? Because this was going to go on a, a backstop. So the only tenons are structurally holding this together. <coughs> it's, I use a nailer. <laughs> little air and some uh, nails and it just goes because it, that's all so these I weren't real sure about so I didn't have to do those okay uh, but normally if I'm doing these I'll cut this side long so that if I need to adjust it to make it fit flush in other words uh, move it a little bit it might only be a sixteenth you know but you know where that gap between the two doesn't show up you know, so I can um, move the piece and actually fit to the uh, t uh, tenon that way uh, rather than uh, have a little gap between them. Because that gap between them will show up a lot more than the fact that it might be a couple degrees off, you know, from square. So once we've cut all of the uh, components, Then we get to the assembly. So all of these have had all of the uh, tenons. And you notice that some are a little long and some are tight. Okay. Obviously I pre-assembled this because I was going to be doing a presentation. Uh, and I found that it didn't quite fit together how when I did the first layout. When I actually cut everything where I thought it needed to be. It wasn't coming together, okay, because uh, measurement or something that I did was a little bit off. So, anyway, we now have a whole bunch of pieces. Now, like I said, <coughs> you uh, have to mark everything, right? So, fortunately, all of this is marked. And if I remember how I laid it all out. So in our assembly, we just have the uh, tenons go in. There we go. Good thing I have them all marked and numbered, right? Well, you know, in other words, I would assemble these. And then assemble these two. And then since we're doing mortise and tenon, then these two would go in here. And when, when you're doing, working with glue, especially on a big piece, it's a lot of clamps. <laughs> because you really don't want to wait for glue time, especially on wood. I mean, now with PVC, I'd be done with this piece. You know, it's, it's where it is. Uh, so... I could get all the pieces and just pull the assembly together, glue as I went, but my sequence had to be dead on because, you know, if I made a mistake, I was in big trouble. <coughs> so on the sequencing, for example, <coughs> we have, we would do this, these four here, and then we get these here. And then this side. See, there was a reason I made all, a lot of these loose, so I could put it together fairly quickly. <laughs> When they're tight, you know, it's a little more difficult, especially because things can get skewed uh, uh, off to the side. And, and then you, you have a, a problem. Now, <clears throat> see on this one, that would be out of sequence, okay? So, this piece, in other words, so you have to get these two ends on first so it's like this okay and then you can do the two side outside side pieces
Now, usually when I um, am doing this work, I would have glued it, and then I may put a pin nailer to hold them in place rather than clamps. Especially when you got a, the real tight tolerances on it. So, you know, once you saw how tight that fits there, so once you got it, you just need a pin nailer. So, now we've assembled to uh, that point. And then these, uh, these pieces all go on the outer edges here. In this fashion. And so they go <coughs> right around in that fashion there. So now that once I've got that all done, then of course we have the outer pieces uh, that would go on that, and then we wind up with this design, which is in the way my wife likes it, like that. Which is what I do, I make them square, cut them off, and then make it fit. So that is kind of how I took Chippendale's design, which they did everything by hand, and figured out, well, now how do I do it and expedite it? It still takes a fair amount of time to do a piece like this, uh, even with the domino. Uh, and I have to make sure I do a lot of it, the upfront work. <coughs> and it works out because I was in IT for years, you know, so. I already knew about, you know, all the design work up front, you know, when working with customers, they said, well, when are you going to write some code? I said, as soon as the design's finished. <laughs> and you, you work through and actually figure out everything ahead of time and anticipate what is likely to do. And then I still wind up, like on this one, having to cut some of the mortises a little long to allow a little mess. Because when I first put it together tight, uh, one of these were off. You know, so if this is, um, which one was, yeah. so this one was off, well, you put that much uh, off on it, and then that pulls all of this around that way, and then all of a sudden it won't square up, and then you try to square it, and it won't square because you, I cut this one, I, I was doing this one by eye, you know, doing it this way, and you know, I don't think that, you know, that my eyes are, you know, within, uh, you know, half millimeter precision sometimes. <laughs> so I can be off a little bit. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just a lot of fun and I enjoy the uh, design work and, and doing all that and figuring it all out. Uh, I will say one of the things that is critical is that I do use you know, that, you know, measure it with a micrometer and adjust it with a sledgehammer. Uh, but this measurement here, since I'm working with millimeters and back and forth, and this is all dimensional, so I've cut these to one inch, and uh, so I will measure those. And of course, one inch isn't always one inch. In other words, this is 25.8. Uh, you know, once I, so I'm not ex set exactly on an inch on my saw, okay? So I make sure that I have whatever this measurement is because then when I cut this in, I do want it to be centered, okay? Now, you had, a, somebody had a question about how do you do the diagonals? I have a jig <laughs> that, uh, I can kind of do a, make a little quick jig here. So you have a little jig kind of like this that allows me to. So this this would be attached to the work table, and then I have a little jig, and then I can actually. See if I can. Um, 
I'll, I'll, I'll use this jig here. And so then we have the uh, mortise on the angle. And uh, remember we talked when he uh, did the chair and we're talking about the seven degrees and all that? Well, all you do is you cut the wood at seven degrees and then you cut it straight and then it'll fit. So you got, so matching up front and back seven degrees is a whole lot easier rather than try to hand cut the tenons, you know, and that sort of stuff and, and make it fit. Because you know, when you do that, you're doing a, you know, cut, fit, cut, fit, cut, fit, cut, fit until you get it right. And not that I've ever taken too much off. So I cut this board three times and it still doesn't fit. Uh, but I do like what this machine allows me to do. And I'm just learning and actually uh, 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 getting in, involved in more and more uh, things. And uh, I also use good tools and always when I want this square because it multiplies, right? If this isn't square in here, by the time I get out here, I may have a big problem. <laughs> I, I mean, if I'm out of square here, just a fractional amount, by the time I get out here, I can be a quarter, three-eighths off. Real easy. So, any questions? Yes, sir. How's the quarters here when you did this? Come to a point like this, and you mm -hmm. want to put it here and there. What angle do you put those with? Do you just go like half and half? You split the board? Uh, no, I, uh, I have a, uh, oh, here it is. I have this. So I actually mark the line from both. Both di both directions, okay, and then I go to my miter saw, and I'm lining up my uh, uh, blade. Sorry, I got it. So my saw blade is actually going to be coming in at this angle. So so I I've, I've got a mark on it. So then I'm cutting this way into the board and this way into the board and then I get a nice centered cut. I, assuming that, you know, when I line up the miter saw that I got cut on the same side of the line on both of them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's how I get no, But cut. I meant the domino itself. How do you cut your... On those? I didn't do the domino on that. Oh, in the corner. But okay. Um, I I did, you know, do that. I had had one cut just to see if I could do it, and you know, you just have to have more depth on it. But I was trying to figure out how I might uh, put it all together, you know, going into the corner. Uh, you know, so what I was looking at, I was going to do a uh, a domino there, and then. You know, in other words, first you would do this domino into, say, this piece here. Okay? <clears throat> and so it would be like that. In other words, make it where it actually came up to that uh, corner. And then, you know, take them apart and then cut another one in and then bring this one in from this side. So I hadn't quite figured out how to join that, but I'm pretty close to, to it on the design. Uh, but I can cut a you know uh, uh, mortise into the end. Uh, you know, either way, cut it really deep, and then do your cut. You know, your 45 cuts, okay. uh, which is probably the more likely way. But I only have so much depth that you can do with the uh, four millimeter because it's a shorter bit. Uh, so you may have to you know cut that. Uh, but what I found is it it may just fit just fine. Uh, to, uh, you know, I haven't figured out if I can cut a mortise into the corner. Right, well, but, that's what I was looking at, the corner itself. Yeah. You can't get the mortise yeah. in there. I haven't, haven't worked it out just yet, but I believe it's doable. Okay. Yeah. 
Any other questions? I right, thank you.